All right, everybody, thanks for joining us. We're live into the Facebook community. Today, we've got Coach Borino, who's a good friend of mine and an amazing, amazing guy as well. And this one's sponsored to you is sponsored by Red X. We're gonna be talking about how to become a six-figure real estate agent. And it all comes from actual real experience. So that, that makes a big difference, Borino, because I know you were a real estate agent and you were a great real estate agent too. So thanks, Thank for, uh, thanks for being on here. I love your red lava lamp. And if you missed it, I also love Robert's red mic. Uh, since it is sponsored by Red X. The only red thing I can find, well, now that I have two, I have Red Spider-Man and the American flag there, the red lines there. But let's get going. Barino, thanks for joining us, buddy. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to chatting with you. Always pleasure chatting and sharing some practical stuff. You know, this is not going to be theory or get you pumped up and just go prospect and good luck, ciao. Yeah. We're going to talk about some cool strategies and good stuff. And I think, of course, Tristan being around for so many years and actually being in the trenches, that's a firsthand experience that's always priceless. Yeah, it's always fun. I'll, I'll I think it makes, it makes the biggest difference. So let's get started. You know, people suggested, Tristan, that you and I should start a podcast, like a weekly show or something. Ooh, so that would be good. All on objections and mindset. Objections and mindset. Hosted by Red X. Dude, done. Oh, sold. Why not? We got it. Sold. Talk, talk to your people, it. Robert. It's uh, done. It's a done deal. Seriously, I'm kind of serious on this one. We'll do like a weekly show, you know, a little bit of Q&A and a little bit of idea strategies. I would love to do that. I, I kind of like it's there, good there, to are have... no, there are no podcasts on handling objections and mindset, both. I am in. Let's do it. I am in. All right. Webinar's over. Good job, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, you know, that was amazing. <laughs> I was really inspired. <laughs> no, I will start it. with a story, if I may. Go ahead. Uh, when I launched the Expired Plus, we are on version five, that was version one. I had a good relationship, always had a good relationship with Red X, got invited to a big event. You guys hosted big webinar, huge. Tons of people, hundreds of people on it. And this was back when the technology was nowhere near as advanced as what we have now. This was no video, it was just audio and me presenting slides. About halfway through, I'm taking a sip of my coffee and I mute my mic. And then I come back and I keep teaching and because I don't wanna be disrupted, disturbed, I took everything off. My phone is off, everything is off. And for 11 minutes, I'm talking on a muted mic. Of <laughs> That's nuts, dude. And I, I share that story for a couple of reasons. One, everybody screws up. So you guys who are driving for perfection and wanting to everything be perfect, even someone who's done thousands of these, I still mess up. And at the end, it's not the end of the world. Nobody died. I came back, we picked up and thanks God people stayed and we shared some good ideas. So just keep that in mind that everybody screws up, everybody makes mistakes, nobody's perfect. Don't go for perfection, just do better. Like now I do better. Now I have a warning system in place if in, in case I goof again. So thanks Red X for sticking with me, even though I didn't. <laughs> even yeah. though you had a mute mic. Yeah, yeah. So now the mic works. I hope. Here's the thing about Barino, he's so good. Even 11 minutes of muted uh, content was just amazing and we still I you know, see that's how i presented more. i said i hope he had enough time to contemplate my last point and really reflect on it let's go <laughs> right you're so funny man you're so funny well yeah look, true story it's a it's a challenging market out there right now with prospecting yeah. because we're getting multiple offers in most areas uh we're looking at 30 40 50 offers at a time people are agents specifically are getting annoyed with no response back from the agent. The seller didn't counter me back. It's so hard to get listings because there's little inventory. And how do we, I wanted to start off with the mindset and then you can go into the objection handling part of this. But how do we keep our mind functioning in the direction of not being the victim, not complaining and really focusing on the things that we can control? How, how would you say we should approach this? That is the greatest question. One of my biggest struggles, especially at the beginning, I'm not going to bore you with the details of the entire story, but I was homeless for quite some time while being in real estate. Tough to do when you do have a nice home, harder when you live in your car. <laughs> and for a long time, I was, fought, I was fighting this whole idea that it's the mindset. I always thought I'm not working hard enough. I don't have the right tools. The market sucks. Um, I need to learn more. It was always something out there. And whenever I came across this concept of, you know, a different mindset, you got to shift your mindset. 
Tristan always thought it's the new age, airy fairy, you know, you got to visualize and millions of dollars drop in your lap thing. And yeah. I always kind of ridiculed it and I fought it for a long time. I don't even know why I was so stubborn about it. You know why? I, because it sounds yeah. fake, dude. That's why. And it sounded too easy. Like, can't be that easy. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying real estate is easy, but boy, was it a lot easier once I shifted my mindset. So first thing I did was, like with everything else, I had to figure out that I had a problem. You can't fix something if you don't know what's broken. And what I realized, what not broken, that may be not the right word, but what needed shifting was how I thought, my thoughts, the emotions triggered by those thoughts, the self-talk I had, and then consequently the actions as a result. Because that's always the chain. Thought triggers and emotions, sequence of thoughts and emotions then either make you do something or not do something. So the moment I start shifting it, things started to shift. And again, you may think like, well, coincidences or you got better. Yes, that was part of it, but it wouldn't have happened had I not started with the mindset. So start with the mindset, there's plenty. Because if you start collecting evidence that there is plenty, you're going to recognize, shit, there is plenty. Yeah. Think about this number, 6.6 .6 million. That's the number of transactions NAR is projecting we're going to close this year. It's about the same or maybe slightly off last year. It's a boatload of business all around you. Yeah. Has it become more challenging? Absolutely. Has COVID thrown a monkey in this right? Yeah, big time. The game has changed and some of it is permanent changes. We have to live with it. But if you get past that, if you only think what I have to change is my mindset, my tools, my systems, and then taking different action, you're going to clean up. Because here is the good consequence of what's going on. A lot of people have left. A lot of opportunities that were not there before because you were competing with a bunch of very incompetent agents are now yours. So here are just a few things that helped me to really start shifting. Once pay attention to your self-talk. What do you keep telling yourself? Because majority of your thoughts and emotions and self-talk create your experience of reality. And the things like I'm saying is market sucks, people are stupid, buyers are liars very often became reality. So pay attention to your self-talk, start shifting. And I'm not saying be the up and down jumper, you know, Tony Robbins, I'm happy, 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 where deep inside you suffer. But I'm saying start gently nudging yourself towards, well, maybe I don't have all the answers, maybe things are not perfect, but I see other agents making money. I see buyers and sellers daily closing deals. I see people living a good life. I can have a piece of that pie. And yes, you can, and yes, you will. Of course, with the right tools, like Red X, good contact management system, and other stuff we're gonna talk about. That's part of it. But really, the shift needs to happen here. Read better books, talk to different people, associate yourself with people like lab coats, my rock stars, people who are on the same page, on the same frequency. I call it the wealth frequency. Because if you join groups, groups like that, you start to notice that there is different energy. The discussions are different. There's very little complaining. And if somebody complains, boy, we kick their ass out very quickly. Because we want to keep that frequency up. We want you to charge up. We want you to feel better. So you must do it yourself. What you're gonna put in is what you're gonna get out. So be very deliberate about your mindset. It's good to combine with physical activity that helped me burn stress, burn tension, and really get on that groove of going because I'm not gonna go smoke up your ass. This is a challenging business, no question about it, but the opportunities are huge. So if you combine things like, I like to, I know you Tristan do too. We do Peloton, we do yoga. Bring the body in, in the mix too. That will help you start getting focused. Next thing I do is I review my goals daily. Every day I remind myself, why am I really doing this? What's in it for me? And it's more than just the money. The money helps. It will pay the bills and give you the freedom. Mm -hmm. But what's beyond it? Be constantly on target, on focus, or a military, you call it on mission. What's the mission? What's your mission? And it's not just close a few deals so you can pay your bills. What's beyond that? What drives you? Once you discover it, and once you keep reminding yourself, that's going to be the fuel. So this will lay your foundation. This mindset will help you stay focused in the right direction. And you do have to be kind of like that horse with those, what do you call those things? The blinders. 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 There you go. You put that on and you, you remove all the bullshit and all the noise and all the stuff that just drains your energy that zaps you that is not on the mission. Once you do that, then it's just a matter of executing certain steps, certain strategies and techniques with a daily consistency. That's the secret. Do you have anything else? I know you're brilliant when it comes to mindset. You are very focused, man. You are one of the few people who really got this dialed in. How do you do that? Dude, it's it's pretty much what you said. It's just, you know what I found? And I'll, I'll shorten it to one sentence here. It's eliminating all of the things that are a distraction to your priorities. And only you know what those are. 
That's it. So you, you said it really well, man. With, with that, I think we can then move into eliminating and handling the toughest objections that we get in the real estate world, because I believe it starts with mindset, right? Yes. Because now when your mindset is right, now when I'm calling, let's say we use Red X every day, uh, now when I'm calling on Red X, I'm like, oh my gosh, these numbers suck. I hate it. All of them are all wrong. This is terrible. I hate Red X. Instead of, oh, you know what? Wow, I'm finding four out of 10 that are actually picking up. Let's do this. And one of them looks good. Let me follow up with them. Completely different mindset. But how do you handle the objections? Like, what does that look like? Because some of them we take personally. Hmm. Well, I have a big ego. I take them all personally. (laughs) (laughs) How do you do it? How do you do it? Uh, well, I'll give you kind of a foundation that will help you when it comes to uh, objections. Don't try to fix something at the end that got broken at the beginning. In other words, don't hope for a clever line that will salvage the damage you've done prior. So let me give an example. You met a seller, you pulled it off Red X, you called, you follow up, it's an old expired listing, you work with them, you get an appointment, you do a listing presentation, and at the end they said, Tristan, that was great. We appreciate what you shared. We're gonna sleep on it. We're a couple more agents, we're gonna interview you, and we'll get back to you. Okay. And where majority of the agents now will try to get one of two things usually happen. Either you get an objection handler from like 1985 some regulatory line, well, let's, uh, which part of my presentation uh, or hey, whatever else? Wait a second, Barino. None of those work, by the way. <laughs> well, then I'm using it as a bad yeah, example. You're absolutely right. I'm joking with you. So you resort to this selling, which creates more resistance. It does not work. And trust me, I tried. And I was very consistent of getting my face slapped until I realized, okay, this doesn't work. So that's one resort. The second, usually the second alternative is Agents walk away thinking, well, I still have a chance. Maybe they'll call me, but they don't. See, the reason you've got that objection and many others, alternatives, is because people are kind. They're polite. What they're really telling you is, we don't trust you. We don't like you. We don't think, we're not 100% certain you are our best choice. That's really underneath the message. But because most of us are not confrontational, it's hard for a seller to tell you, you're not that good. Most of them will not tell you in your face. They will rather resort to this soft lie because it feels better for them and it gets them off the hook and you leave, which is what they want. You know, that, yeah. brings, that brings a story that I remembered. And Please you know, share, yes. It reinforces what you said. There was one time I was already, he was already, this guy was already a client with me. Mm-hmm. And we, were, we just weren't getting along. Like he was a heavy engineer, analytical aerospace. The guy owned a multi-million dollar home and we were having a hard time in escrow right and he blamed a lot of that on my team this is uh 2009 2010 and me and my team member were across the table from him he looked up and he said with a straight face he goes you know what tristan i don't like you straight (laughs) out and i was like you know what his name i go I don't like you either, but we got to get this done. <laughs> I was like, you know what? That's a great response, actually. I love that. I just came Man, up with it there. I was like, and he said, I can respect that. I was like, okay, let's do this. <laughs> See, but the thing is, some people will like you more than others. Some people respect you more than others. But there has to be a certain level of certainty they have to have about you. Yeah. And if they don't. A clever line, we're not going to get it done. Now, the fact that he signed with you and you're already in escrow and doing the deal means they had a certain level of faith in you and yeah, your right. abilities. Yeah. yeah. And not all my clients liked me. You know, I had one seller where I said, you know what, do you have the listing contract handy? He goes, yep. Yeah. Uh, here's what I want you to do. Roll it up real tight and shove it up your ass. <laughs> I'm not proud of it. I'm not saying it is to brag, but you know, you don't get along with everybody. Yeah. But, but this is so. good for people to hear because- <laughs> I, when I see and talk to you guys, I think everyone likes you guys. That's why it's so easy, right? Like, like you, well, you guys are really good at this because everyone likes you. So these stories, I think, are great for everyone in the grind to say, what? There's someone that doesn't like Coach Barino or someone that doesn't like Tristan? Like, like I, I, I think that that's good to hear and funny at the same time. I appreciate oh, that. Funny. 
That's true, Robert. That was very funny. Well, Dude, but the that, fact is, I had clients who didn't like me, you know, and I, I find it hard to believe people wouldn't like you, Tristan. You're one of the most pleasant people to be around. And I mean, as a business, I, I mean, as a friend, as, your demeanor is very pleasant, very easygoing. Not that you would be a, a weak or low status. You have plenty of status, but you don't need to sell it. You don't need to be aggressive about it. So, yeah, dude, but, I guess, you know, that's just fact is this. you're not going to get along with everybody, right? So. No, and you don't need to. And, and this will be hard for agents who struggle, who don't have enough deals because of the uh, mindset of scarcity will be hard to hear. But please hear me on this, guys. Don't work with people who don't match your perfect client profile. You're going to do yourself a service. Your business will grow. You will have a lot more integrity and you're going to attract the people. Because it's just like if you hold on to a certain number of marbles in your hand, you cannot add more marbles until you let some go. And if you let go of those who drain your energy, your time, that zap you. And we all had clients like that. And here's the funny part. I had sellers where going in, I knew I was asking for trouble. It's going to be hard. They're going to be difficult to work with. I saw that. The red flags were waving all over the place and they were about eight feet wide. And by greed or fear or scarcity mentality, I still went in and got the listing and regretted it later because now I had to invest a lot of time, attention, effort into a deal where normally I could have had three, four nice, easy clients and easy deals. And it comes back, it bites you back. Trust your instinct, trust yourself, okay? So going back to Tristan's point about objections, start at the beginning. It's much easier to set things right at the beginning to avoid objections at the end. There's a question because, for you before you yes, keep sir. going, Barina. There's a question by Brett. Says, yeah. um, please repeat that. It says, don't work with people who don't what? Question mark. Oh, don't work with people who don't match your perfect client profile. What I would like you guys to do as an exercise, and you can do it right now or you can do it when we finish, but please do this. Make a list of five, maybe six, maybe seven things that matter the most and make them non-negotiable. So I'll give you my list. I want to work with people who are nice. That's number one. I want to work with people who are motivated, who have a solid reason to move. I want to work with people who appreciate me and my service. I want to people who don't mind paying me my fee. I want to work with people who are honest. I want to work with people who follow my guidance. Those are some of the qualities I look for. And if they don't pass this test, I won't work with them. It doesn't make them bad people. It doesn't make you arrogant or anything. It just means you have certain standards. And I promise you guys, if you hold on to your standards, if you keep your integrity, it is so attractive, especially in this business where a lot of agents, let's be honest, don't have the greatest reputation because they don't have any integrity. They're so hungry and very often desperate for the right reasons. They do the wrong things, but make a list. And here is an interesting thing that's going to start happening. If you get clarity who you want to work with, more of those people will start showing up. And you may think like, well, it's coincidence. It's not. Your clarity will start attracting them. Is that helpful? That's very helpful, man. I think you bring up, you bring up a great point there where once you start outlining what your perfect client looks like, right? You, you really start working with a reticular activating system saying, hey, by the way, <laughs> this is what's important to me. And your reticular activating system filters out everything else and okay. makes that the main focus. So it's scientific, which I love that you brought that up, man. It's a very good point. You're absolutely right. Yes. And it works also on the energy level. I mean, we could debate for a long time how it works. Nobody cares. It doesn't really matter. Just trust it that it works. I still don't know how my engine works on my car. It's a big ass SUV. I, if I open it, I have no idea what the parts do. Don't care. I know how to start it and get me to one point from one point to the other. So just take it at that. It does work. Okay. Next point, when it comes to objections, there are three qualities you must bring to the table. Now, here's the important part. It starts at the very beginning, the first four seconds. You establish in the first four seconds of the interaction, whether it's on the phone, in person, whether you knock on somebody's door, they come to your open house, the source of that lead is not important. But what happens, the way we're wired, our neurobiology kicks in very quickly and starts evaluating you. And they're measuring several, several components of you. How competent are you? How assertive are you? Are you a threat or are you a friend? All of the, and it happens super quick. That's why your first impression lays the foundation. You wanna come across with three qualities and they need to be equal in one third. Number one, confidence. 
your confidence is the most magnetic quality, is by far the most attractive quality you can demonstrate. Now, you cannot sell it. It's not one of those fake, you know, used car salesmen. Hey, how is your day today? It's nice to have you on the lot. Would you like to buy this Buick? That's not what I'm talking about. It's the confidence that comes from within, where you can trust yourself. You know, I know how to get the job done. I'm good at what I do. I can be trusted. I like myself. I feel good about the quality of service I can provide for my clients. It comes from within. In other words, you have to sell yourself before you sell yourself to others. Sell by, you know what I mean. So that's one, confidence. Work on your confidence. You need to be 100% confident. It's the sense of certainty that people are looking for. The second one is competence. You must know the business. You cannot be hesitant. You know the market. You know how to fill out the paperwork. You know how to get the listing sold. You're a competent agent. That's the core quality. It's just like if I call an Uber, I want the dude to be a good driver. That's expected. And the third one is compassion. So these are the three C's, competence, confidence, and compassion. And really be honest with yourself, guys. Like if you take a piece of paper and rate yourself, would you score five on all three? Because if you don't, you're not broken. These are skills. You can develop these skills. You can build them. These don't require talent. These require skills. Do you have good personal skills, compassion skills? Can you listen? Can you really get through the noise and the clutter and the fear that they deal with to go to the core of what is this client really trying to do? How can I help them? What is the best course of action? Because so many agents are so focused. I need to get this listing. I need to pay my mortgage. I'm short on money. This is really live or die, do or die. That's not a good place to be. As opposed to, well, let's just figure out. And this is one of the questions I very often would use in a conversation with a client. Like, imagine I have a magic wand. And imagine I can just move it in the air and make it anywhere you want to, make it happen anywhere. What would you like? What would be the perfect outcome for you guys? Would you rather stay here? Would you rather go? What would be the ideal scenario for you guys? And if I pay attention, there may be times where it's clear, you're better off staying. It makes no sense for you to sell. Stay where you are. If I can have that kind of integrity where I come in with a lot of passion, but no attachment, it's going to come back tenfold, hundredfold. So remember those three that needs to come across in your marketing, in your social post, in your communication, on the phone, in person. This is what's required. Confidence, competence, and compassion. And would you say those are the three that, that you use to connect with people the most? Yeah, absolutely. And those are qualities they look for. Now, they may not be able to articulate that, but if one of these or more are missing, you're going to end up with way more objections. You're going to get a lot of stalls. You're going to get a lot of deflections. And sure. trying to salvage that with some clever line or some sales strategy is not going to work because they're missing something that you cannot deliver through a line. They're missing something that needs to be part of not just your communication that's important, but also your behavior and more importantly, your beliefs that you have. Very like, true. and that might be a little arrogant, I admit, but from the very beginning, I always felt like I'm the best thing that happened to my clients. Like they're so, so lucky that we crossed paths that they didn't end up with some shyster or some commission chaser or some part-time agent who doesn't know basic stuff about real estate. I'm, I had other agents I competed with who were just as competent and had more experience and big teams and big advertising, but I would very often win the listing where people were willing to trade the lack of experience for my compassion, my confidence, and my competence. You know, so even you guys who are new agents, doesn't mean you can't get listings. I mean, you can't get clients. You do. So you totally can question here before we get into the techniques that that you've used in the yep. past for fizbos and expireds yep i want to know how how do you work on these three c's how how would we as agents be able to actually work on confidence competence and compassion where do we go what do we do brilliant question tristan to work on your confidence start with your communication and the way i did it i used a very simple approach being a foreigner, you know, me from Czechoslovakia, I had an accident. You guys remember Borat? Remember? I, I love Borat. Yeah, I sounded like Borat. <laughs> That's crazy. Sound, that was me. Yeah, like so much. You want to buy a house? It's good. <laughs> that was me. That's good. So I had to kind of clean up my communication because people were like, what did you say? What, sir? What? Yeah. So, so here's what I did I had my buddy Tony in my Remax office. We would get a cup of coffee every morning for 20, 30 minutes and role play. And it was this back and forth, just like in sports, just like in any activity. My daughter plays piano. She's been playing for six years now. 
daily practice, daily repetition will, will increase your confidence. Because pretty soon, and it really shouldn't take more than probably two, three weeks, maybe a little longer if you're slow like I was, but probably not, you will notice that you can handle questions better. There's more confidence in your delivery. You can control the conversation better. You're prepared no matter what they come back at you with. It's going to make your communication better just by practicing. But you need to really commit and do it consistently for about a month. So that's confidence. Work on that. The second part, and that goes with competence, is you really need to know yourself. So if there is something you don't know, whether it's market or marketing or follow-up or presentations or whatever it is, work on it. These are skills. This is a skill set. You're lucky because we're in a business where you don't need to have talents. This is not like you need to be certain height or have certain attributes. Remember this. This guy from Czechoslovakia figured it out. So what does that tell you? So it's a set of skills. So brush up on the market, really stay on top of it. You need to know what's going on. You need to know what are the homes selling for. New listings pop up, new pendings, expired, sold, all of that. You need to know it inside out. You need to know it better than your competition. And with really studying it daily, previewing daily, staying on top of it daily, studying like keeping current matters and, and watching your hot sheet and going out there, previewing open houses, doing all that, you will become an expert pretty quickly. And as far as the compassion, the best way to do that is become genuinely interested in what's best for your people. Push aside your needs and your desires, and you have right to have goals and desires, and you need to pay your mortgage and feed your family. I get that. But the less you can attach to that, the more you're able to step away from that and really just focus on the client and their situation and their goals, the better compassionate person you will become. All right. Yeah. I teach a process called high intent, no attachment. That means I come into a meeting. Let's say I meet with an expired listing. I have a lot of passion. As you can tell, I'm really passionate teaching you guys, helping, chatting with Tristan and doing all these things. You need to deliver the same. You need to be that positive, upbeat, passionate person that people are hoping for, especially in the world right now where we have so much uncertainty and such a turmoil coming in. And I use this visual like a lighthouse. Remember, there's this French photographer. He's, he shot a series of pictures where it's, it's this lighthouse in the middle of the storm and there's this giant wave just crashing into the lighthouse, just kind of wrapping around it. And the lighthouse is just standing and there's the lighthouse keeper standing in the door down there. That's who you want to be, that lighthouse that's solid. No matter what kind of crazy shit is exploding all around you, you you're steady. So you're very passionate, you're very optimistic. That's the first part. And there's the contrast to that. You're not attached to the outcome. Some listings you will get, some you won't. Some deals will go through, some won't. Some people will go with you, some won't. Not being attached, not being the desperate, needy, low-life salesperson rather than that high status who said, did my best, didn't work out. Let's do it again. Maybe I can do it better. If you can do that, the balance goes out. You're going to win and you're going to crush it. All right. Dude, that was, yeah. that was super solid. Uh, I, I <laughs> love you. it. I love that. So one thing I noticed for those people that are paying attention, when he went over confidence, competence, and compassion, the mm -hmm. way to increase all of them with one word was practice. Yes. Yeah. He said, look, you want to get better at confidence? Guess what you have to do? Role play, get better and get comfortable by practicing. You want to get better at compassion? Well, you actually have to practice it. <laughs> so, yeah. Like you want to be nice, you want to be kind, change your approach. Stop being a jerk, right? Use better, yep. use better language. And then competence, same thing. What do you how do you get better at things? You practice. So that was that was pretty awesome, man. I, I love that. And Thank Eric you. from Boston. What's up, Eric? Always on Boston in the house. I think we all know Eric. Uh, and he says, Hi from Boston, gentlemen. I have to say the Boston one. Uh, Coach Perino, I sat in on a webinar of yours a while back, pre-COVID, and you were a proponent of the 160-minute workday. Work for 40 solid, uninterrupted minutes, then 20 minutes, or whatever you like. Repeat four times. Do you still think that this is a winning strategy in this market environment we find ourselves in? What a great question. It's Robert, right? Robert? Uh, Eric. 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 Okay. Rewald. Eric in Boston. 
Yeah. Uh, great question. Do I, I, do I still propose, propose that approach? Here is what I would recommend because we are under different circumstances. Like I have two teenagers who are three days home, two days school, school. So the dynamic in many families has shifted. Many of you are working out of the house. We now have a new dog we got last, what, about eight months ago. She's awesome. But it, the dynamic has shifted. So I'll give you an approach that will keep you sane and keep you productive that has worked really well for me. And I call it the 25-5. It's a modified version of what Eric is talking about. Work uninterrupted, completely 100% focused with 100% intent, 100% energy, zero distractions for 25 minutes. That's about as long your brain can go without those thoughts starting to creep in. I need to check on Facebook. Tristan posted this funny meme. I need to see it. I need to, oh, wait a second. I need to, the bill I didn't pay, let me just, you start drifting after about 25. So give yourself 25 minutes, but make it non-negotiable. Like I have this big sign I put on my door. I have the basement set up as my office here. Nobody can come in. We have a rule that unless the house is on fire or somebody's bleeding, nobody can come in. And make that 25 minutes really rock star. okay? Then take a five minute break. And what I mean by a break, it doesn't mean you just kind of click off what you're doing or hang up the phone and go on Facebook. You physically get up and that's important. The physical movement is important. You step away from the area where you work. So like I take the dog, we go on a little stroll for five minutes just in the front yard to play around. I say hello to the kids. I take a sip of coffee, get some water, really reset. Allow your brain those five minutes of reset. And then 25 minutes back, immerse yourself in your work. If you do it in this rhythm, you're gonna notice something interesting. First, you're gonna get a lot done. You're gonna feel very productive because your mind doesn't feel like, shit, I gotta do three hours of prospecting. That's gonna kill me. I'm gonna be exhausted. And you will be exhausted. And it's a too much of a stretch right now. Because of the circumstances and the conditions we are under, it's this subdued stress that we all experience with the restrictions, the masks and the restrictive of movement. You can see your friends and all these things. So doing it in these small chunks, changing this frequency is gonna get a lot more done. You're gonna feel good and you're gonna get results. So do that, 25, five, 25, five. Now then you have an option. You can do another set and take a longer break or you can just say, I'm done with this. I can do something else. But here's what I encourage you to do. Make the chunks related. That means my recommendation would be start with good lead generation and follow up. Front load that. Do that first thing in the morning. Talk to people, connect with people, send some emails, send some texts, make some videos. Do the productive stuff that involves you communicating with either prospects or your existing clients. And then do the admin stuff, the stuff where you design your ads or you send emails that does not require as much sharp presence in the afternoon. And I would still do it in the 25-5 chunks. I would definitely do that. That's I've been doing that for about the last, I don't know, nine months or so. And it's been working real well for me. And many students that I recommended who follow this pattern. So I call it 25-5 approach. Helpful? Good. I like that. All right. So now with that said, you've got this yeah. set up. How do you approach expires and for sale by owners? I know we have Red X here. We both yep. have, have used them. I currently use them. I know you, you're a proponent of them, but Absolutely. what does that look like on a daily basis using a company like Red X? How do you fit them into that day-to-day? -day? This is what I would suggest. Uh, in the past, the approach is very simple. You fire up Red X, you, st you, you fire up the dialer, you put a headset on and you just dial. But I think those days are over. Like my new iPhone, has a function there where I flip a switch. And if the person calling me is not on my phone list in my book, it won't even ring. So you need to get a little more resourceful. Phone still belongs there. Phone should still be part of it, but it's not the answer. That's why folks who tell me, well, you know, I called 10 expireds and three numbers were bad and only one answered, expireds clearly don't work. You're leaving wide open opportunity for agents who will figure this out or who listen to people who guide them through this. So here is how I would use it. Use Red X as your source. You can get a lot of research done. And guys, hear me on this. There are not going to be a whole lot of new expires right now. It's going to change. It's just another market swing. But until then, go back. Um, how far can you guys go back? Robert, do you know? Well, it, it, you can go back to whenever you started your account. But when you set up a new account, we can go back a whole year for you. We can cool. go back further call than back that too. Year. You call our success team, they'll get you all sorts of old expires. Call them immediately, guys. Set that up right away. 
I have students and we have this group where I, where I do private coaching, where they post their success stories. They're listing properties left and right doing this. And they're posting actual pictures. And I might actually have one if you want to see just as an inspiration. But here's what I would do. Fire up Red X, take care of the today's expireds, the new expireds, call them if you can. Those you get on the conversation, practice a little role play, do a little, little dialogue with them. Text those you haven't reached, follow up with the text immediately. Those you haven't talked to still, email them and then either visit them or mail them. I call it the first salvo and do it in that sequence. Because if you can get hold of 10%, great. What about the 90%? You still have a great opportunity. So pull them out of Red X. Now you do the same with old X parts. Same concept. And you can go back six months, a year, two years, doesn't matter. Here is why. If you check statistics, and this very slightly based on MLS, Tristan, you may have some insight on this in Southern California. But in my area, about 50% of the expires go back on the market. Half of those sellers who haven't sold, who tried, let's say a year ago, at some point will come back. Here is why. Just because the property didn't sell doesn't mean their dream just disappears or their goal just goes away. Sometimes, but very often it doesn't. It just kind of sits there. And if the right agent comes in at the right time with the right approach, and then with some follow-up, you would be surprised how many will say, you know what, we're thinking about it. Give us a month, call us back in a month, and you have a good lead. And more importantly, unlike those new expires who sometimes get pummeled by a lot of agents, you won't have a whole lot of competition. So the field is wide open. But just like with anything else, it requires good competent communication, good system, you got one, Red X, contact management system so you can keep in touch with these folks and be persistent. Because what you discover and what I learned the hard way, that no at the beginning, very often just means not right now. What you're looking for is that hesitation, that pause. And one of the questions you can ask, and here's a good dialogue that you can use, is you can ask questions like, well, Tristan, let me ask you a question. Buyer walks in tomorrow. They fall in love with your house and they're ready to pay you a good price. What price would you consider? Like if they made you an offer, is there an offer? Is there a price that would make you at least look at it? Would you consider it? Yeah, if it's uh, market value, I'd do it. Or maybe even slightly less if they came in really quick. Now I have a conversation I can go. Because I can say things like, you guys were trying to sell, what, about eight months ago, right? Market has gone up since then. So we might even put a little more cash in your pocket than when you tried the first time. Well, why don't we do this? Why don't we get together for a few minutes just to kind of go over the stats, go over the numbers, see if it would make sense for you to even consider it. And then you sleep on it, you decide. Maybe staying here is better. I don't know your situation and I'm not here to make decisions for you, but maybe it's time to give it another shot. Where'd you guys want to go? What was the plan? Well, uh, you know, looking at going to Carmel in California. Car wow, nice, good for you. Waterview maybe? <laughs> yeah, dude. That'd well. be nice. It's, it's a beautiful place. That is beautiful. What brings you to Carmel? I've never been. I've heard, I've seen pictures, but I've never been. You know, it's, it's the environment. It's the people. Yeah. It's a small little town, Carmel by the sea. Yeah. It's, it's very peaceful and quiet. Have you, had, have you had your eyes set on a house there? Anything that got your fancy? Anything you liked? As long as it's closer to the ocean, I don't mind. Nice. Very good. See, now I can have a conversation. And what am I going for? You're going emotions. for motivation and motivation, to... urgency, emotions, exactly. So because now it would be fairly easy to say, well, Tristan, let's assume ideal scenario. You get a good price for your house here. You find a lovely home in Carmel with a beautiful view in the community that it feels like a nice small community where the life is still a little slower. Is there anything holding you back? Anything that would cause you not to do it? Uh, we just don't know if it's the right timing yet. You know, mm -hmm. prices. We don't know how high they are. Mm -hmm. uh, just, we just haven't really looked at that whole full picture. Makes sense. Now I know two things. What's holding them back and what's, one, what's the purpose to move? So I know the motivation and their urgency, but I also know their fear. So my job now as a master communicator, I will start diminishing the fears and flaring up the desire. Because friends, remember this. People only move for two reasons. There are only two reasons why they move. It's always an emotion, that's number one. And the emotion is either they're avoiding something painful, uncomfortable, unpleasant. They're trying to get away from it. And they're going something that they created a construct represents pleasure to them, happiness. Like in Tristan's case, it would be community, sense of small community, small town. 
viewing of the ocean, fresh air. So here is a construct, if then. If I have this, I'm happy. If I get away from this, I'll feel better. So your job is one with compassion, ask the right questions to really understand them. And two, set up the next step that will bring them one step closer. See, I would not go for, well, let's make it a reality so we can move to Carmel. That's too big <laughs> no, of a leap. I would hate you. <laughs> that, that would not be good. That would be like asking a girl to marry you on a first date. No bueno. But we can take the next step. So you decide how far can you take that next step? Would it be send them some information? Would it be another call? Would it be send them some resources? Would it be to connect them with an agent in Carmel? And I would always tailor it based on, do I need to address the fear? Do I need to feed the drive, the pleasure drive, or both? Does that making sense? Yeah, 100%, man. I'm following. I love this. I think we, we don't ever go into this part of calling for sale by owners or expires. Mm -hmm. It's typically, we just go right into the scripts, right? Yeah. And there's so much more to it than this. It, is. it really is the art of conversations. And that's what I teach. I don't teach scripts. Like what you notice is I follow certain patterns. There are certain dialogue outlines I follow. Like, let me give you an example of what I mean. This is from the expired plus. I use a pattern interrupt to open the conversation. So if Tristan was the new expired listing, I would start with, hey, Tristan. Hey. Hey, it's Barino with ABC Real Estate. I'm not the first one calling about your house, am I? No, no, you're like the 40th. No kidding. You got 40 phone calls today, man. That's crazy. Where were all these people when the house was up for sale? Hey, real quick. Is the house back on the market? No, we decided to just keep it off the market for now. Yeah, I don't blame you. See, that's called a pattern interrupt. I start a conversation very differently. My tone is different. The choice of my words is different than every other agent because the last thing I want Tristan to feel like, asshole number 41, not a salesman. <laughs> I don't want that. I don't want that reaction because remember what I said, the first four seconds count the most. So what I just established in his subconscious, in his receptors is I'm not a threat. I'm easy to talk to and it's going to be quick. And I have to do it very quickly. This is where the skill and your practice has to kick in. Yeah. Because you can't wing this. I tried. <laughs> it adds <laughs> badly. <laughs> That's so funny. So we start yeah. with something like that and you can create your own. This one, I just like to use because it worked well. I get the chuckle usually, can release the pressure. It's just going to be a nice and easy, quick conversation, which I really just want, a nice and easy conversation. You don't want to go for too much, too soon, too fast. Too much, too soon. I'm trying to get a listing appointment on the first call. If you get it, more power to you. That's awesome. But most of the time it will not happen. And not because you're doing it wrong, but because human psychology. That's true. That's true. It sounds like a pushy boyfriend. Too much, too soon, too fast. Yeah. Needy. Yeah. You don't want to be needy. Just On contrary, my general approach throughout the conversation would be, well, let's just see. Like, here's how I would set up an appointment, listing appointment, follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up conversation. I would say something like, Tristan, well, let's just get together for a few minutes. First of all, see if we like each other, see if we want to work together. I don't know. Maybe we will, maybe we won't, but at least you know where you are. I'll bring some cool information. We'll go over it so you know where you stand. How long would it take realistically to sell? How much cash are you going to put in your pocket? Uh, are there any improvements and repairs we should do to enhance the property, to even increase the, your bottom line? And then we'll see. Then you decide. Maybe we'll shake hands and say, yeah, let's go. You're on your way to Carmel or maybe not. I don't know. But at least you know what's going on. Would that be helpful? That would be, man. Thank you. Awesome. So why don't you sweep by my office tomorrow? We'll grab a cup of coffee and let's talk. I like it. Uh, and then I give two options, two times, you know, that's it. Very easy. Right. Watch. So, I'm positive. I'm optimistic. I'm passionate. Now, if Tristan says, you know what, jump to the lake. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to meet you. I'll be like, okay. Very true. Very true. So look, we talked yeah. about mindset, right? Which is extremely important. We talked about the qualities that allow you to connect at a higher level, right? Yep. Which I love and how to, how to practice those. We talked about your approach, which I love, by the way, because that's the, that's why that's why we we uh, we're friends. By the way, we get along so well. We have the same approach to a lot of things. And it's not my good looks, damn it. That, you know that was second, dude. That was second. <laughs> that's second. You, you didn't let me finish. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's okay. And then uh, I wanted to talk about what you think is the most effective time if there is a time 
to call expired or for sale by owners? And is it something that has to be done four hours at a time, five hours at a time, six hours at a time? I want you to explain that if possible, because we have all different levels of agents watching. Mm -hmm. Let me start with the second question first, if I may. Okay. Call everybody. Call everybody. The more people you talk to, the better your chances of crushing it big. So the more you talk to, whether it's on the phone, text, in person, the better. So start with that. Just at the beginning, when I started working expired listings, my initial goal was just to get good at it. It wasn't to get listings that I always considered that appointments and listings to be the bonus. I first wanted to get the conversation and the communication out of the way to really master that first. So maybe set the first goal for let's say the next seven days. The objective is not get appointments, get listings, none of that. Just get good at people relaxing with you, feeling good about talking to you. And it's a skill that you can develop. So how many? Start with this. What would make this a good year for you? How many transactions would make this a good year for you? Pick a number. Because remember the mindset Tristan and I talked about at the beginning, if you see it, there is plenty. There is an ocean of money. I mean, we're printing money as we speak. There is so much money, way more than you can possibly handle or want. There is more business out there than you can possibly want. There, is, there are more buyers and sellers out there desperate for a good agent. If you accept that, then it's just a matter of making a plan. You're gonna need three things in place. You're gonna need a system, you're gonna need tools, and you're gonna need skills. System means I know what the steps are. I know what the process is. We talked about it, the first salvo, the follow-up, the visit and all that. Tools like Red X, good contact management system. Those are tools you're gonna need. And then it's an execution with good skill. Your communication skill, your follow-up skill, and just being disciplined. The success of this business really does not depend on talent, but being disciplined to execute. So going back, how many? Let's say you say, I wanna make a quarter of a million dollars. You can, totally doable, totally within reach. Absolutely possible. Tristan, average commission in Southern California right now, what? $10,000, $15,000, something like that? Yeah, about 15. About 15 grand. So, okay. I'm going to give you a rule that if you live by, you're going to succeed. Strip the emotions and your success is nothing but math. Strip the emotions, put the emotions aside, and you end up with math. So, let's do the math. And I suck at math, so I'm going to get my calculator. <laughs> You're like, oh, dude, I totally do. My kids make so much fun of me. It's not even funny. All right, watch this. 250,000 divided 15,000. So you need to close 17 deals, 16, 17 transactions in the next 12 months. Is that doable? That's what? 1.5 to a, to a month. Totally doable. Which means you need to take about 17, 18 listings. So let's say you lose two or three for whatever reason. So let's be conservative. Let's say you need to go for 20 listings because if you take 20 good listings, you're gonna get paid plenty, true or false. All right, so now watch this. 20 listings divided by 12 months. So we need to take between one and two listings a month. Come on, totally doable, totally within your reach. So now let's work it backwards. How many appointments do you need to go on to take a listing? If you're like me, my closing ratio is about 80%. Now let's say you're, let's be conservative and it's half, 50%. So that means you need to go on a listing appointment a week, give or take. You with me so far? So 24 appointments, that's your target. This is the mission. 24 appointments in the next 12 months. You're still with me. All right. So now the third part to this puzzle. So we got listings, we got appointments, we need leads. How many leads does it take in order for you to get a listing appointment? Now I'll give you my numbers, yours will be different, but the formula is the same. I needed 10 leads to get one listing appointment. So if I know I need 24 appointments, I need to generate 240 leads in the next 12 months. Divide that, now somebody can do this in their head, I can't, I don't have that skill. It's 20 leads a month. And now you have a target. So now you start architecting your day to say, okay, how many fizzballs and expires do I need to contact to generate a lead? How many do I need to email? How many do I need to mail? You start keeping track, nothing complicated, simple Excel spreadsheet will do, but you do need to know because then you can tweak it, you can adapt and you can scale it. 
but you need to end up in the end of the month in your contact management system with 20 leads you're following up with. You with me so far? So then you start structuring it. Maybe it's gonna take an hour a day of prospecting. Maybe it's gonna take 90 minutes of prospecting. Maybe it's gonna take two hours. You need to figure this out. That's not something that I can give you a template for, but it's gonna be pretty close to what I'm giving you. And then, and this is gonna be the hard part. It's a matter of consistent execution. Consistent execution. Because here's the thing, on the day you don't get your one lead or two leads, now you doubled it for the next day. And then if you slip two or three days, it's gonna start piling up and it's gonna be more and more until one day you just raise your hand and say, fuck it, it's just, I can't, I can't do this. Too much. Not because you can't do this, but because you don't do consistent execution. You have to make this just like you have to make your success, your lifestyle, the freedom you want, non-negotiable. Make it absolutely non-negotiable. There is no plan B. There is no alternative. The only alternative is you're going to make more. Make that the only thing that's optional. Everything else, come hell or high water, you're going to get that done. How are you going to go about it? Maybe you're better on the phone, maybe in person, maybe mail, maybe combination. Maybe you discover video. Maybe there is something else that clicks that is bringing you results. You have to kind of gauge it within you. And I love that about Tristan approach who always said, find what your strengths are, build on those. Don't just start to pump your weaknesses. Although there are some core qualities like communication you can't avoid because at some point you need to have that conversation with the prospect no matter where they came from. But you're going to start building this business. It's not going to be perfect at first. You're going to build it as you go and you're going to tweak it. And you say, okay, I really need to brush up on, on when they say we're going to think about it or we don't know what we're going to do or whatever else. So I'm going to show you a little tool. That's the second secret that will get you better. And I keep it with me all the time. See this? This costs about $30. This is a digital recorder. Keep recording yourself. Not the other person. We're not interested in what the prospects are saying, what they're asking, none of that matters. All you care about is what you sound like. Are you competent? Do you sound confident? Are you in control of the conversation? Are you listening? Do they do most of the talking? Are you asking the right questions? This will tell you very quickly. So get good at it. And as you get good at it, you start tracking, you know your numbers, you can build a business plan around it. You see, I'm a big fan of diversifying the business, but you need to develop certain core funnels. And I honestly believe that the easiest, fastest way to get a lot of listings and make a lot of money, go for the low-hanging fruit. It's right there. You go on Zillow, you go on Red X, you go on all everywhere, there is business around you. Fire up Red X and you're going to get fed these. The hardest part has been done for you. The leads have been identified. What you need to do is just connect with them. And if you know statistically that they're going to end up going with somebody, why not you? Is that helpful? Dude, that's extremely helpful. We went on a whole different side of for sale by owners and expireds uh, when it, uh, I think this is where everybody should start really. My bad, let's start all over again. Welcome you guys, <laughs> my name is Gary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so funny, man. Well, look, thanks for being on. I think, I think this might be a part one to a two part series because the next part we could yeah. easily go into now let's get into the specifics right yeah so i definitely robert are you up to that man yeah let's 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 Should get back more together of this, this has been great yeah he did the two of you i mean really these are two of the, the best in the industry you know I mean? this is good stuff this this is like the foundation like i understand you guys sometimes look for a good line to use or a clever text to send and i get that i understand i i sometimes seek those shortcuts as well but once you put this in place that stuff is just tweaking. That's like the icing on the cake. If this is missing, you're building a house without a foundation. It's not going to hold and you're going to struggle. And I don't want you to struggle. You can succeed. I mean, I don't pretend it's easy, but it's not complicated. It's not that complicated. And with the right tools, like you guys have red eggs and good CMS, totally doable. Totally doable. But yeah, we can continue this conversation. I, I was hoping Tristan would... <laughs> Tell, share his side of the story because he's a rock star when it comes to working fizzballs and expireds. And I'm sorry that I bogarted most of this. Our Dude, time no, it, was, it was all about you, man. You set a strong foundation that we don't talk about often. So it's really good. I have a question for you from Amanda. So Amanda says, how much time would you dedicate towards prospecting, follow-up and social media for an agent trying to fill up their pipeline? 
all day. If you have ambitious goals, there's nothing else to do. What else are you going to do? Yeah, you're going to spend maybe an hour previewing property, just kind of doing the real estate stuff. But other than that, what else is there? Dude, that's Especially if you have ambitious true. goals and you want to crush it this year, yeah. do the 25-5 all day long. Yeah, I, Flood I, social media with your presence. That's a great idea. I would, I would totally... We stepped up recently. We... Uh, started going heavier on social media. You might you may see more of Borino on like Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and Twitter. Now I started Twitter, <laughs> dude. Completely new to me. So that's a good idea. But in addition to that, I would go heavy, heavy, heavy on lead generation, and I would split the lead generation and follow up equally because they're equally important. Well, yep. What's your thought, Tristan? I think you're right on. I think a lot of people don't want to hear that answer. Uh, you should work the whole day. But you yeah. know what? If you really want it, you do it. And you stop yeah. bitching that it's too hard because everything worthwhile is hard. I tell you, I was broke as they are. I mean, I was really, really broke where I would sneak into a grocery store and steal food because I had no food. And then I made friends with a couple of lovely girls at Taco Bell and I would get free bean burritos, the 49 cents burritos. <laughs> that completely was just, it was a disaster, but I had food. That's how broke I was. And today I'm not broke. I am grateful to have enough money, more than enough, more than I need. And I'm not trying to be cute, but I, I'm here to tell you guys, having a lot of money is much better because shit will get hard no matter what. Making a lot of money is hard. Being mediocre, sitting in some cube, in some meaningless office, in some meaningless company, doing some meaningless work, whatever. I, I worked in a corporate world for a while. It's hard. Mm -hmm. Being broke is hard. It's all hard. No matter what you choose, there'll be challenges, there'll be difficulties, there'll be stress. It's going to be hard. But here's the advantage. Making a lot of money will solve a lot of the problems just by writing a check. Now, a lot of my problems are not problems, are just expenses. And I can solve those, just write them a check, done, gone. That's the freedom, where you're no longer looking on price tags, you're looking for experiences. You're building your life on your terms. And this business, God knows, will, can get you that. Where I had a friend, quick story before we wrap up. I have a friend who recently became a brain surgeon. That was his dream for a very long time. He just became one in San Diego. Wow. It took 18 years to reach that point. He's going to operate on people. Now get this, 18 years of dedication, four years of school, four years of college, med school, $310,000 of student loans. That's going to take him about 10 years to pay off. Mm -hmm. You have zero debt. You can reach that level of income. He's going to make about $360,000 a year. That's what a good neurosurgeon does. You can be there in three to five years. But here's the difference. One, no student loans. And two, if you make a mistake, nobody dies. There's way less pressure. If he screws <laughs> up, somebody's dead. So think about it, the opportunity you have. I'm not saying real estate is easy, but anytime you can have this kind of freedom with this kind of income, yeah, it's going to be hard. You got to hustle. So honestly, Amanda, do it all day long. Why not? What else are you going to do? Because here's the thing. My father used to say, life is so short. It goes by so quick. And I always see, nah, 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 nah. I see it now. As I'm getting a little older, I'm approaching my late 40s. No. <laughs> I see it. <laughs> Don't waste it. Hear me on this, guys. Don't waste it. There's plenty of opportunity. You can really, I mean, think about it where you can be three to five years from now. Yeah. Making the money, buying some investment property, living the freedom that you want. It's right there. And I want this session to be the one where you look back, you know what, those two guys and the companies and all that made a difference. I would like to, I would like to kind of wake you right now and speak to your soul that you can. Yeah. Well, I think you did, man. You, you hit Thank on you. a lot of great points. Very inspirational. I'm hearing that. So look with that, can we get a big thank you for coach Barino? please. That was, that was really good. Uh, we love it. Thank you guys. Thanks for RedX. Thanks for inviting us. I, I love doing this. And we, Tristan and I were talking about doing something together periodically. I would very much love that. Cause yeah, dude, Robert, such a, a podcast yeah. is great, you know? Yeah. Part two, part three, part four, full on <laughs> podcast. We're, we're in. <laughs> 
You know what? We, we can that. name it. We can name it. Choose your hard. There you go. Oh, I like that. Because Barini like that. said, "Look, both are hard. Which one do you want to do? <laughs> Choose your hard." Hard either way. Look, there's a lot of votes for part two, so we're we're gonna need both of you back. Uh, I love Thank it. You. Well, we'll be back. thanks, thanks for this, everybody. Coach Barino, follow him on social. He's got a great YouTube channel, by the way. He's got like twenty five thousand subscribers, so go to his YouTube channel there, and you can find all the good stuff. And then. Robert, thanks for being part of Red X. We put up the link here. Our team uses it daily. So thank you for sponsoring this one. Thank you, guys. Thank Appreciate you. it very much. Thank Robert, you. Robert, thank you, Red X. Tristan, always a pleasure hanging out with Dude. you guys. You guys, thank you so much for hanging out here with us. Post some comments. Let us know what else we can help you with. We're here to help. That's my job. That's my mission. And I love doing it. As you can tell, I'm pretty passionate about your success. So don't let me down, damn it. <laughs> thanks, All right, guys. Ciao. Bye, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.